question from Mr. Strauss, and he sent in another message uh, asking me if I would make sure I get back to his last question, so we'll do that now. Finally, are incorporations a dominant element for standards developers? If only 5% of standards are incorporated as law, the business model is not disturbed. What is the proportion? If incorporation is of only a partial element, would making such elements public have any impact at all on the business model? Uh, Joe Wendler from ASME. I, you know, a lot of our standards that are incorporated are the ones that actually generate revenue. So of our, our 550 standards, I'm not sure which percentage, but probably less than 10% are referenced. But I don't think they're referenced. I think, you know, the reason they're referenced is because industry is already using them, as was said. So I don't think that's what's driving uh, our revenue. It's the fact that they're good standards. But so we just can't afford the, to make the ones that are, that are um, referenced for free because they actually subsidize a lot of our standards that are developed for the public good that generate no money whatsoever for us. Okay. And at ASTM, our situation is very similar. It's a classic 80-20 situation where really it's 20% of the standards that we develop and, and distribute fund the other 80% of our activities. And oftentimes, some of those are the ones that end up being referenced. And, and maybe one point on that, well, and to build on Joe's point, uh, we're not just talking about the US here. These are standards that have worldwide utility, are used all around the world. Um, so if we complied with the U.S. in today's era of electronic uh, Internet access, they would essentially be, we'd be giving it away to the world. Uh, so that, that's one issue. I think that's it.